This is the Roballo R160. That's my best uh, Doug DeMuro impression. <clears throat> Hopefully that hit with at least a few of you. I recently picked up a Insta360 X4 action camera, which is really awesome. And I'm also learning some video editing tools with a free program called CapCut. And I figured I'd take this opportunity now that I've owned the boat for three and a half years to just kind of show you its quirks and features and some of the things I've done to it. And maybe we'll get into why I bought this boat. So come along for a ride with me on beautiful Lake Norman, North Carolina in the Charlotte area. And we'll have a little fun. I'm departing here from Queen's Landing, which is the boat ramp that I usually use in Mooresville, North Carolina. Uh, we're coming out of the cove where the boat ramp is and we'll head north under the Highway 150 bridge to the north side of the lake where Lake Norman State Park is. And once we get up there, we'll talk a little bit more about the boat. A little bit about me, I am in my 50s. This is my fifth boat. Uh, all the boats that I've owned have been 19 feet or smaller and mostly center consoles with one exception. We had a Stingray, 19 foot Stingray bow rider for the lake. And uh, that was the last boat I had before I got the Roballo. You're seeing the Highway 150 bridge in Mooresville. So I bought the Roballo because I really wanted something I could use in both the lake and the salt water. Here we are getting close to our destination. This is on the north side of Lake Norman, kind of near Lake Norman State Park. Um, you can see the water up here is a lot cleaner than it was in the main channel. We've had a lot of rain from Hurricane Debbie a couple weeks ago. So the main channel is still a little bit muddy, but up here in the coves, it's much cleaner. One other thing to note, because of the fisheye lens on this action camera, uh, everything in the foreground looks really small, especially the boat, but uh, it's just an illusion. I'm also six foot four, which might make the boat look a little small as well, but just keep that in mind. The fisheye lens on the camera makes the, the foreground look pretty small. Gets pretty hot here in August, so this is the perfect place for a... The factory swim platform is a must. I love it. Okay, let's do a quick tour of some of the storage areas on the boat. We'll start up front at the bow. Bow locker is good size. Uh, you could use it as an ice box, a fish box. You can use it for storage like I'm doing here. I actually use it for both. Just depends on what I'm going out for. I've got a pretty good size tackle box in there. I keep my fire extinguisher up front as far as it can be away from the engine and the gas tank. Here's the live well. It comes as an option with the fishing package along with some additional rod holders. I really love it. It's a must for me. I drilled some holes in my live well drain tube because the live well fills up really high and it kind of sloshes around. So having some holes there helps the water to kind of stay a little bit lower while the live well is running. Here's a look inside the center console. As you can see on the shelf there, I put in a five inch inspection port. That way I can kind of check on my charger for where my batteries are. That's where I put my trolling motor batteries and charger. So with the inspection port there, it makes it really easy to kind of peek down there and see uh, your state of charge when your charger is plugged in. And uh, if you need easy access to something down there, uh, it's better than taking the whole shelf out. Kudos to the Insta360 camera. It did a much better job under there than I thought it would. In terms of storage space inside the console, yeah, there's plenty of room for a toolbox. Here on the left, you can see my NMEA 2000 backbone for the electronics, as well as the speakers and my not so perfect cable management, but you get the idea. Moving over to the port side of the console, I put this little basket on here that I got, I think at Academy Sports, it's great for holding knickknacks and scissors and pliers. 
These are little glove boxes that I got from Boat Outfitters. I started with one and I liked it so much, I bought another one and installed them both side by side. They're great for phones and keys and wallets and sunglasses and anything else you might want to throw in the glove box. Underseat storage makes a great fish box. And uh, if you're not fishing, you can fit a variety of other stuff that you would expect to fit in an average size cooler. Under the port side jump seat, I keep a five gallon bucket with a lid on there. And inside the bucket, I've got the cast net, siphon, and uh, some life jackets. Starboard side jump seat. There is the starting battery and a few more life jackets. And I've got a pull cord that runs all the way up to the console so I can run wires with that. When I'm not at the dock, my fenders actually fit perfectly right back here. And this here might be probably the best thing I've done to the boat. This is just a small four inch inspection port uh, behind the gas tank. From here, you have very easy access to the live well pump, the bilge pump, the float switch. You could put a siphon tube or a hand pump down there in case of a bilge pump failure. Otherwise, the only way to access the bilge is to lift out the gas tank, and I just don't think that's a safe way to operate a boat, especially if you're pretty far from shore. You really need to have access to the bilge. I installed these super simple quick-release fender locks, just a metal lock that's got a ring on the rope side and a little mount on the gunwale. Super easy to get your fenders on and off without having to tie knots. Pretty basic electronics configuration here. I installed all this myself. On the top there is my Minn Kota Compass for the trolling motor. This is the Simrad Go 9, which I really like. It's got a lot of great features. I did hook up my instrument display from the Yamaha outboard with a Yamaha data cable. Forget all the parts I use for that because it's been several years, but essentially you get all of the Yamaha engine data output from the motor and into the Simrad and I actually Took me forever, but it's probably my greatest accomplishment. I figured out how to get trim and tilt from the motor trim and tilt sender over to the Simrad. I think I did post something on Facebook on how to do that. And if I can remember to find the link, I'll put it in the description, but that was a project um, and I was super happy to figure that out. Here's a USB charging port. It's also an aux port for the Clarion stereo. I have a ram mount at the head of my trolling motor just to keep it locked down and secured. It doesn't bounce around when I'm underway. I really like that. I'll just deploy the trolling motor here quickly and give you a very quick demo of how it works, but it's totally a game changer, especially for fishing. I mean, you can find some structure and hit the spot lock or the anchor lock button and it'll just hold you there. And uh, I don't know if I could live without it. It's totally a game changer. So here's a quick demo. All right, good enough. Uh, there are a million videos on how the trolling motor works. So if you want to see more about that, do a YouTube search for the Minn Kota Tarova Riptide trolling motor. It's awesome. This is probably one of my most frequently used configurations on the Simrad. I have the map on the upper left, the instruments on the upper right, and the bottom I have depth finder and fish finder. I also like to use down scan there or side scan. Those things are awesome as well. Right here I have the motor trimmed all the way down so at this point you get up on a plane pretty fast but you're creating a lot of extra drag at the bottom of the motor as well as your bow is being forced down into the water as well creating some extra drag. Once I get going here, I start to trim up and you'll see my whole SE Sport hydrofoil kind of come to the surface of the water. This also lifts the bow up a little, so you've got a minimum amount of drag at the bow of the boat and a minimum amount of drag on the lower unit of the engine. 
So in summary, most people know this, but if you're new to boating, you want to keep your engine trimmed all the way in when you're coming up on a plane and then slowly trim it up if water conditions allow for the most efficient way to run your boat. So this might be my favorite shot or perspective with the Insta360 camera. I have it on an invisible selfie stick or the selfie stick is right there in that Scotty rod holder on my bow rail and uh, it just makes for a really cool shot. Here we are back at the dock. Another important modification that I did was I actually went to a machine shop or a welding shop and had them extend my tongue about 40 inches. You can kind of see it here in this picture from the hinge to the hitch was really short and stubby. And when I backed my boat into salt water, I found myself having to dunk the back wheels of my tow vehicle a little too deep in the salt water for my liking. So this helps a lot with that. All right, we're out of the water. Fortunately, I've never been featured on the Boat Ramp Champ channel or the Qualified Captain, so I guess that's a good thing. I'm doing something right after all these years. And uh, just a quick look around the outside of the boat. Here's my transducer where I've mounted it. Uh, I installed all that myself. Pretty straightforward. I've got a four blade aluminum prop, which is my go-to. I really like uh, the way it performs in the water, really smooth. There's the SE Sport hydrofoil. Swim platform is a must. The propeller is a Solas brand, S-O-L-A-S, and I really like four blade because it does give you a little bit better whole shot out of the water, a little bit more bite in the water. And the aluminum props are pretty cheap, so you can keep two or three as spares and try different sizes for not too much money. The rod holder there on the bow rail is a Scotty brand clamp-on rod holder. They're great. I really like them. Also up there on the bow is a Sea Deck fish ruler. You can also see the 40-inch extension on the trailer tongue. It's welded on, super strong. Here you can see how I have my trolling motor mounted, dead center of the bow, and then the head of the trolling motor doesn't really stick out past the gunwale there, so it's protected, and it's held up by that ram mount to keep it from bobbling around, which I really like. Well, friends, let's wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the Roballo or anything that I have on it or anything that I've done to it, please leave a comment and I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. If you found this useful, maybe give it a like and a subscribe. I may be doing some more content in the future, but it uh, just depends on if people are actually interested in it. So if you like or subscribe, that will tell me that you are interested in it and maybe I'll be inspired to create more content like this in the future. Oh, one more thing, if you have any questions about the Insta360 X4 camera, or if you have any feedback about my fledgling video editing skills with CapCut, don't hesitate to leave a comment about that as well. And with that, safe boating. I'll see you out on the water.